imagine making a subframe go like this. Or like a fucking, what am I doing? Like a weirdo doing this down the road. When we went out the other day, and I broke down. <laughs> Get some fucking sun in here, lads. Let's drop the bonnet. And the idol picks up again. Anyone have any ideas? <laughs> Good morning everybody, good morning everybody. It is an absolute beautiful day, summer summer is coming. I've actually done a video this morning on the Fiesta, some terrible bad news, go and watch that video. I feel like it's just always bad news with me doing stuff now, it's just bad news. More problems, more issues, well, yeah, anyway, so. This thirteen is here, remember in the last video we found, <laughs> surprisingly, lots of issues. Um, and today we're fixing some of them. So. Um, I actually got the, if you, we, we actually, we actually found out that uh, the ball joints on the bottom arms, one was bad and one was like almost on the edge of falling off. It was terrible. So uh, I did a Patreon video, so if you're not signed up to Patreon, please become a Patreon. It really helps support the channel and I give back to all the people who can support me the most on there. So there's loads more content I give away, where's monthly giveaways, discounts for all the companies that I have or work with. Is go and have a look, it'd be really good. So I did a Patreon video taking these arms off and um, and going and getting the, the ball joints done. So we've actually got some new ball joints on these arms um, and we've also got a new hub from Neville. So remember the last video we had, uh, one of our hubs were cut and shortened. It's not good, it's hitting the bump stop. So I've got a new hub, we've got these arms, let's get them on and the car can go back on the floor. And on Friday, we've actually got some bushes from Powerflex and we'll be going to Modern Mini and doing the rear subframe bushes on Friday. And then it'll be, well, <laughs> a lot better drivable condition than it is now. So luckily, I've only got the car in the air because I've left it up with the wheels off. All we've got to do, we've got to take the brakes off the discs, off the hub, off the coilovers, and we've got to change these hubs. And then we're going to put in the blow rounds, and then our front sh it should drive so much better. So we're actually going watching Jimmy Carr tonight. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to take this car, or it's going to go in the truck while I've got the truck, because this thing, the subframe boshes, do make terrible noise, and I'm very tired because I've got toothache, and I'm not sleeping because of it. I'm starting to stop chatting shit. Let's get on. So here, here is our hub from Neville. Shout out Neville, Neville. If you need any Japanese parts, Neville is the guy. He has everything. Uh, so here is our hub. Looks like someone's grounded off the AR ABS, which is cool because we don't have we don't have it. So we, yes, we've got to change the wheel bearing again. We've got to take the wheel bearing off, which is annoying, but it's not as annoying as doing the back. If it was on the back hubs, I'd be I'd be fuming because it was so bad but luckily these ones on the fronts aren't that bad it's just i've lost my breaker bar i don't know where it's gone so i'm hoping that i didn't put them too tight last time that i can't get them off with my long half inch so here it is it's just like this now it's all very loose because there's no bottom arm on there but we just got to just start pulling everything off really so uh, i'm going to take the track rod off i think it might be a better idea to put the bottom arm on otherwise everything's just going to be flopping around like it's got no fucking business but pretty much all we got to do Obviously, take the wheel spacer off, the disc off, the brake caliper off, the trap rod off, and the coilover off, and then the wheel bearing off. The, the, everything. Oh. So luckily, because I've had everything off recently, everything's coming off rather nicely. So why why these are attached? I'm going to get the the wheel bearing off. So I feel like that is probably going to be the hardest thing to get off because I know these are going to come out pretty easy. I know the coilovers come out easy. So. We have to tap this little cover off. Right, good news, the, the bearing ain't spinning. Bad news, it's fucking tight. I've lost my breaker bar. But I think if I can get this off, I think we can use this as a cheetah bar. Okay, I can't use it all, but I've got half it off. Come on, you bastards. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, fuck it up. I definitely didn't tighten that that much. I'm not that strong. Right, there she is. The bearing, literally, if you just tap that, the bearing just comes out. It's not like the back's front comes off pretty easy. So let's get this little cutter pin out. So can you see the difference between this one and this one? Yeah, piece of shit, right? Right, and that's one side done and absolutely solid. We may need to adjust the tracking a little bit. Well, yeah, but when I, when I, when I got it tracked the other day, and um, that's good. Waste of waste of time. <laughs> um, because I do think I need to send to my rack as well. So we're going to send to my rack on Friday as well. Um, 
and then we'll have to go and get it tracked again, uh, unfortunately. So, but it is what it is. What I did was well, I actually, there's a little bit of um, manipulation on the coilover on the strut, so the, the top hole's a little bit elongated. So I'm gonna put them both in like full camber, full slam back, I'm gonna do the other side where I'm fitting the arm. Um, and then I know they're both exactly equal and then we can just measure them off the top of the coilover just in the coilover to basically get them mixed up um, so I've pushed them all the way back into the coilover the hub and then tighten them down some on about just this top elongated hole here let's get the other arm on the other arm the other side I've literally just got through the arm uh, so little, little take it five minutes okay so we've got them both on we've got the hub on we've got the arms on each side everything's tightened down I've even done the camera on that side so there's the centre wheel, or the centre wheels of the, of the rack as it is now. It might be a little bit off. So, let's go left. So that's one, one and a half, just over one and a half. So let's come central. So we used to lock out there before. So I've got one, one and a half, and a bit. So the rack is kind of central, a little bit more locked to the right, but realistically, I think that's good. A lot of lock that way. And a lot of lock that way. We've got a little bit more lock to the right, but that is a good job well done. So I'm gonna keep the wheel straight. We just need to put the track in kind of right now. So the wheel centered there, this one. And this one is towing a bit in, so we'll just tow it out a little bit more on this side. Okay, so what I've done is as I said, I put the hubs on full camber and that made such a difference because before these BCs were on like full camber up here. Now we're more towards, you know, straighten out. Um, and the where they were before and I've made them equal as well. So now they both look exactly the same. It did need a five mil spacer on the side regardless because then the left hand side of the car is just not as, not as fast out as, as the right side. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to use our cheeky little method to jack the car down which is full lock, jack underneath there. It's the only way to get this car in and out of the air because the bumper kit and the, the kit's so low. We're going to go for a bit of a spin and see what difference that made. We might drive past the jet wash as well and get all this sand off. We didn't know um, there was a sandstorm in Spain about a week ago and down south here we uh, we got it all in the rain so you can actually see you can see the bootleg it's just full of sand and shit. Let's jack the car down. And it's so nice to have that front done and the hub done. And then we just come straight on the back on Friday. All right, so there we go, back on the floor. So, yeah, it's it, it's a good fitment. Um, if I did any more camber, it would just push them in a little bit more. Now I know I've got that much adjustability, I could probably go like a massive spacer on the front and uh, an absolute massive spacer and just camber the hell out of it. But I don't really want to do that. But it's nice and symmetrical now each side, it looks good. So let's start it up. I have got a new battery as well. I stopped being a tight bastard and I just bought a battery. Um, there it is, little line battery. I don't like line batteries. No offense you line batteries, but every time I've had a line battery, it's like broke on me before it should have. No offense line batteries, you want to sponsor me out. Line batteries are sick. Right, here we go, here we go, here we go. battery works oh it's idling so, so me and Cooper just did the idle when we went out the other day and I broke down <laughs> get some fucking sun in here lads we adjusted the idle I've run out of screen wash which ain't good I can't see I can't see yeah it does something like the bit it still makes the knocking noise obviously because the subframe bush is a foot and now we've not got that drag on the front left wheel Oh, it's nowhere near as bad. The the, uh, the front ball joint was probably either knocking itself or just making the whole car skip, which is probably why the rear sounded even worse because I never used to notice the rear being that bad and I had the normal hubs on it. So mate, so we've changed that hub and now because it's not skipping as much, because probably if the front was doing that, but it was making the subframe go like this. I'm like a fucking, what am I doing? Like a weirdo doing this down the road. I mean, obviously the knock is still there, but it's like hardly apparent. It feels better. It doesn't feel as like floaty on the front end. It used to feel terrifying. I'm not gonna lie. I did do both sides, by the way. I don't know if I filmed it, but I did do both sides. I did film, obviously. I obviously changed both the ball joints, everybody. Well, I didn't. I was sent to a garage that could be fucked. 20 smackaroonies, ADS autos. You are the guys. And them subframe bushes are definitely bad, and they need doing, but. My God, has that made a difference to the whole car? 
Like, my God. But one thing is, as it starts to get hot, as you can probably hear with the car now, right? The idle goes high. The, the idle is going higher and higher and higher as the as the weather's getting warmer and warmer and warmer. And we had to bypass our idle our idle air control, like our cold start, um, like our obviously like our air temperature idle control, because it just wouldn't start with it. So I'll show you now. So this is what I've got to keep doing, which isn't good for a long term. I need a long term solution because I can't I can't keep doing this. I have to keep bloody just adjusting adjusting the idle from there it has been running now and it starts nice i'm gonna plug in the idle air control valve and see if it runs with it on it didn't use to start with it on but then again like we was having lots of different issues running it at the start anyway so let's plug the idle air control valve in this little horrible little t piece here is our is our um bypass because we didn't know if it was going to be temporary or whatnot so we need to take all this off here and then you could, the idle control valve is just underneath the uh, the throttle body so let's plug it in and see if it runs okay so now it's rooted through this pipe here into the idle control valve comes out this side here and obviously back into the the standard vacuum system so let's see if that's made a difference so it runs Never used to run before with that idle control valve in. So I am going to leave it in. It's only really when I drive that the, um, that the revs start going higher. So yeah, that's done for a little spin. Yeah, I've just found the weirdest thing ever, right? So it was idling fine, so I shut the bonnet and then the idle jumped up. So I opened the bonnet, I shut it again and the idle went up. Is it when the engine's getting a bit of movement? Let's do that again. Let's drop the bonnet. And the idle picks up again. So when I'm moving, that's what it keeps doing. When I'm driving and stopping. Anyone have any ideas? So this one is a locking screw. And this one is just the idle, so. But I've got an issue with setting the idle shock. So. At the pot, so you see the threads in the middle. The threads in the middle are knackered, which means I can't use this one i can't get that one tight enough against there so it's just always going to move um so what i'm going to do is because the threads are just shit in the middle i'm going to try and wind this one off nicely hopefully um and then put like big washers in there where the threads are good so these are going to screw down where the thread's nice and the washers are just going to fill in that gap where the thread isn't good that is my plan but for that to happen I have to get this nut off uh, it's not threading off it's just absolutely tore to bits the thread in the middle so I'm going to have to grind this bolt off, grind this nut off because it's just absolutely fucking up the threads just doing more damage than one trying to get it off so I thought about just using this as the washer that nut as the washer because it's not on a thread anymore um, but <laughs> stupid design I thought well, I'll just put another nut on the end and just tighten it against that nut I can't get anything right past this I thought I'd be able to squeeze it in I thought I'd be able to, I thought I'd be able to squeeze it over this <laughs> just a nut but a nut just will not go over it I've even got the thinnest one I can it just will not go over it so I don't know how the hell I'd even get them nuts off or another one on but I'm actually going seeing Jimmy Carr tonight, so I have to go. I've messaged Neville, see if he's got a spare throttle cable instead of me just pissing around. I've tried multiple different things and can't think of anything to make it worse. If anyone's got an idea, please let me know what to do with that. But I love you all. See you in the next one. I love you all. See you in the next one.